Hey there, it's Patricia Young. I recently screwed up pretty big time, and I am having um, a little bit of shame about it. Not a whole bunch, but um, enough to make me want to get this right. So I've done a number of Facebook Lives. I have a video on YouTube and on my website talking about the four core characteristics of being a highly sensitive person. This is all Dr. Elaine Aaron's work. And it's kind of interesting. That's Chewy walking around in the background. Chewy the dog, not Chewy the person, if you listen to the podcast. Um, Ch Chewy, quiet, please. Quiet, please. We'll see how this goes. Mm. Anyways, so there are four core characteristics that spell out the acronym DOES. There's depth of processing. The O is for over arousal or over, see, I'm going to do it again, overstimulation. And I have called it overwhelm. Now, obviously, if we're over aroused and overstimulated, it leads to overwhelm. But I think it's really important to provide accurate information when talking about the traits of being a highly sensitive person. The dog's whining is really bugging me. Um, let me see if I can give him a treat. So, you know, I want to provide accurate information. And I feel like there's already such a negative perception around being a highly sensitive person to infuse the definition of overwhelm when that's not really what Dr. Aaron's research said. And it's kind of the difference of saying emotionally responsive versus emotionally reactive. And I think as highly sensitive people, we already get a bad enough rap for being sensitive. We're called too emotional, too dramatic. We think too much. We're worried too much. We're too picky. Just feeding Chewy some treats and see if I can keep him quiet. So I feel really bad. And I, when people ask me about resources for highly sensitive people, I'm very mindful about only referring them to people that I know are providing accurate information. And here I am with a podcast and doing Facebook lives and feeling like I know a lot about highly sensitive people. And you know what? I made a mistake. So it's that thing of, do I keep cheat, cheat sheets, you know, notes with me all the time, or is it okay to just talk off the cup? So let me tell you what the other two are as long as we started. So the E is for emotional responsiveness or empathy. We feel things very deeply. And the S is sensitivity to sensory stimuli. So it's interesting that I feel like there are a couple of groups um, for HSPs where, and it's not my intention to be controversial, and I probably will, and maybe I shouldn't have even started this. I feel like I've been a little snubbed. And when I launched the podcast, I really tried to connect with some key people and key groups in the HS community. And, you know, maybe I'm just not a good fit. I, I don't know. I, I have to let it go. And, uh, you know, now I'm feeling like, so I've been providing some slightly inaccurate information and that would rub me the wrong way. I am always looking for places where I can provide education. I've done two online global summits about being a highly sensitive person. I've done a number of Guest, shot, um, guest position shots, I can't think of what the word is, on podcasts talking about the trait of high sensitivity because I really want people to see the strengths and to understand it. And it's the wounding that often gets confused with the sensitivity. But I reached out to a podcaster to see if she talked about high sensitivity. She's like, oh, I did an episode. So I went and listened to it. And instead of calling it the highly sensitive person, she referred to it as the hypersensitive person. I have a lot of judgment, I have a lot of expectations, and I went into judgment over this because I really want people to be giving accurate information. And I have been giving inaccurate information. The O is for over arousal and overstimulation. It's not for overwhelm. So I think it's really easy for us to go into judgment and criticism about groups. And then often, like in this situation, here I am, I made a mistake and I've got these videos out there and I need to decide, do I wanna write something that does a disclaimer? Do I want to redo the videos? So it's about humanity. It's about self-compassion. It's about doing the best job that we can. I, I have a very strong value about providing very accurate information about being a highly sensitive person. A lot of what I share about is my own experience and then what I get from my clients. The truth is every highly sensitive person is different. There are things that are going to be similar for us. And there are ways it's going to show up differently in all of us. And so I may not have given the impression that there's uniqueness. Maybe I talk about it in a way that makes it sound like we're all the same. I don't know. It's, it, I guess what I would want you to know is my intention is to provide accurate information and to speak from a place of experience and what I've seen. And I'm human. I'm imperfect. And I made a mistake. So 
the best thing I know how to do is to come on and say like, hey, I, I told you something that's a little bit inaccurate. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. You can get all my information at unapologeticallysensitive.com. If you don't know, I have a podcast called Unapologetically Sensitive, which is all about being a deep feeler and a deep thinker, which is often us highly sensitive people. Remember, sensitivity is nothing to apologize for. It's our superpower. Have a blessed day.